Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be motivated by your host, Reverend John Wheeler! Now shut up! You shut up! Sit down! Shut up! Shut up! Well, hello there. I have to make sure it's running. It's running just fine. As much as a free piece of software on an 11 year old laptop could possibly run uh, using uh, j just as old of a phone as a camera, we are a million dollar operation. Don't forget it. Uh, Meredith is with me today. Actually, present. Yeah, on camera. On you might have heard her disembodied voice <laughs> last time, and then an even further away disembodied voice as my wife was in the health and wellness center behind the black <laughs> curtain here, which seems kind of like a joke, but it's actually true. This part of the basement is bisected into like, there's like exercise equipment, weights, a massage chair, and an infrared sauna over there. Um, I like to live the good life in the corner of a basement. Just, you know, not forget my roots, but still be looking onward and outward. Um, good basements. Alexis is one of the people who will benefit f greatly from the $10,000 student loan forgiveness thing that seems to have actually maybe happened today to a certain, that's in, was in the news. Yeah, yeah, the Biden thing that he promised, he finally did. Uh, and all the people who are really dumb. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and certain people might get 20, but here's well, the thing. Maybe I should like, you know, go, check yeah. back in and not yeah, try you, to get you, some you money. You never know. <laughs> it's really worth looking at. Uh, but, like people have already come out with a bunch of like, you know, circular logic bitching about how it's not fair or whatever. And it's like, yeah, like, the same people are like, just suck it up, you know, some of us could afford nicer cars, maybe if you worked harder. It's like, hey, this just worked out for me, and I might move into a bigger house because all this debt got erased. Like, that's not fair. Like, you're not fair. Also, you're dumb. You deserve to be poor. That was like, also, like, some of Alexis's debt was completely because she got screwed by that Argosy school, yep. where they were like, well, uh, we're not making enough money off our investment, so we're just closing the school and the shut credits. That shit down, like and they didn't give her any of the money back, and it's like, it's probably about to the tune of ten grand. And if you're just like, it's not fair, I'm like, it wasn't I, fair before, but then it's like, oh well, you uh, someone should have did something. It's like everybody sued them, and everyone wrote their Congress people, and everybody did everything they could, and fucking nothing happened. And then this did, and your fat mouth is gonna bitch. Well, stick a cock in it. Wow. Well, I was just gonna say, I think. <laughs> One of the main cosmetology schools that happened to them too, like the students went to show up for class and all the fucking locations were just closed. Or at least one of them, it might have been, I know the Burnsville one for sure, and I don't want to say it's Regency, but someone out there will know what I'm talking about, but still, the same thing that happened with Argosy where they just shut their doors and people show up and they're like, what the fuck? And then they're just out money for well, yeah, tuition and, this, and they're expected to pay it. And, and this whole thing is, is it's been interesting watching the people be like, well, something about taxes. I'm like, that's what you always say. I don't think you know how those work. Or inflation, <laughs> which is the new favorite thing for you to say. And you fucking super don't know how that works or what it even is. And then uh, the very last thing being like, oh, shit, I just almost I lost my train of thought already. I had such a big... Oh, right, the naked, the just the completely naked aggression. And like when people are like, there's already been articles being like, but if they do this, not as many people are going to like stay at their shitty jobs and work for us. And then they might have enough money to start investing in like things like GameStop. And that messes up. Our business. Literally, they're like, hey, 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 get back down to the galley, surf. Like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? I mean, try real hard to get up to where I am. It's possible without daddy's help. It really is. Like, just when the mask completely comes off, that's my favorite, when they're just like, yeah, but we make all of our money out of fucking you over, and if that's not happening anymore, well, what am I supposed to do? It's like all the people I was renting to bought houses, and it's just like, what am I going to do, get a job? I don't know how to do anything. I certainly can't fix a goddamn furnace, so I mean, you know, what? <laughs> I have to go to school to go to HVAC, and school is expensive. Yeah, it's all really dumb, but the only reason I bring that up is, is, see, a few episodes ago, I was yelling about how I need to make more money, because, like, I do fine and by not doing very much or trying very hard, and I'm very proud of that. But I think I'm getting to the point where it's time to just stop with all this nonsensical dreaming and get to what's really important, which is hoarding as much wealth as absolutely possible before I die. And today, as we were, gonna, we were getting some celebratory sushi after Alexis got off of work, 
uh, because of this proposed. It was celebratory. Okay, well. Yeah, like, yeah. So that you're all like, just like, want to go eat sushi? I'm like, no, we don't normally just go to sushi. Just well, randomly, like, like, no, we're we not living like to go that. Last and, weekend. Well, I know, and we keep trying, and now it was time. But I didn't know what the, we were the, celebrating. Well, we were celebrating that because, and when I got to the restaurant, and here's something I, I wanted to make sure I brought up, as I was reminded, one of the reasons of you know getting rid of debt and accumulating more wealth is very important. There was some little kids just looking at me while I was eating. <laughs> and, you know, they weren't running around and sneezing on me and tripping. I mean, you know, it's a sushi place, but it does offer like an all you can eat thing. Uh, but it's like actually pretty good and whatever. So it attracts things like families and like, you know, but you're going to sushi, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to eat, drink some sake, eat something nice. And, you know, there's, like, little kids just, like, giving you that little kid stare while you're eating. And you're like, can I help you? And their parents <laughs> look at you fucked up then. And I'm like, you need help, too? And, yeah. But see that what... That happens to you kind of a lot. It really does. And I, you know, I like confrontation. So maybe it's the universe helping me out. But And yelling at children is funny. But <laughs> the thing is, is I, I want to make, eventually, the kind of money where... I can just start going to restaurants. Not that where kids aren't allowed, because you can go to a bar, right? You can go to a comedy show. No. I want to go to a restaurant where ki- everyone's allowed, but people are afraid to bring their children. Like, they don't bring them in there because it's the kind of place where everyone else looks at them and goes, like, you can't afford help. Like, I want them to not bring their children in there because they need to find a better deal. And if I see a 10-year-old boy with in any family in there, he better be wearing a suit and tie. And he better just be staring at his food in silence, counting the seconds until he gets out of there. Like that, I want to so just some want... rich waspy place that runs on <laughs> fear. Yes, a rich waspy place that runs on fear for nine hundred dollars is a country, what is a country club? Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, you know, your members only jackets. Yeah, shit. <laughs> a real a place where only folks who can afford the coolest windbreakers can go in there, and they cannot bring their children. Anyway, yeah, but instead, we're still at the Discount Sushi Hut, and, you know, it's good sushi. I got a little sockied up before I even got here, and I'm um, having a gin old-fashioned, the older old-fashioned. I invented something for you. I don't know yeah, what that... I don't know if we can name everything you invent for me, because... No, I'm always just trying, and I always feel like... It's the Toilet Bowl 2020. I've, I've been on podcasts before, and I think I've talked about it. It's the blue... You've drink. been on podcasts before. You've been on the podcast Rum Dumpster. <laughs> Which was, yeah, the birthplace of the toilet, the Tidy Bowl 2020 or whatever we called it. It was just the Toilet Bowl 2020. It was the Toilet Bowl. That's right. Okay. I just wanted to mention the thing. I just imagine that sad 10-year-old who just it just, just squeezed into a suit die against his will and there's like, don't you dare embarrass me. It's like, and that's the one kid in there. That was the 80s. Definitely the 80s. Yeah. But no, that's the thing. I think I mentioned this on another one, too, is like, uh, progress where things get shittier and more annoying, like you gotta watch your mouth, you gotta like let people bring their kids. That only happens to poor people. Like rich people just still get to live like it's 1963. Like that's that's what's great about it. Just kind of like, hey, why don't we just keep this between you and me, sweetheart? Just drink it at work. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, rich people don't have to be like, let's include people. Let's do a bunch of extra work. It's like, no, we're doing this how we want to do it. That's because we can afford it. And that's, that's, I think that's the only reason I care. Like, if, if it was still a few decades ago, I'd be okay being kind of a slobby, upper, poor class person because it's like, yeah, but everyone still has to wear a sport coat to dinner. Like, even the poors. Like, you just have to. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll throw you out. You're just like, sir, this is a McDonald's. Maybe this shit flies in Burger King, but button your waistcoat up correctly or we'll ask you to leave. Technically, Taco Bell won the franchise wars of whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Well, they're the only place that isn't gross, but they still won't make you, like, you know, put on a blazer before they'll serve you a, a gordita. Ah, I couldn't Well, think they about. will in Demolition Man. In no, that's true. I guess everything comes full that's circle. That's what I was fucking saying. That's where the, yeah, and then why, the and, and, and every Yeah, it's fancy in Taco Bell now. And you know why? Because they shoved all of... The luxurious Taco Bell. Yeah, they stuck all their poor people in the sewer. Like, they were thinking ahead <laughs> in that fucking movie. Only Las Vegas does that. <laughs> we need all 50 Where? states. Homeless camps, uh, I bring you a little uh, cartoon series called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Jesus, this is mean. <laughs> <laughs> you could learn karate and eat pizza down there. I don't think that's mean. <sighs> you can get a TV going, you know, a beat up chair. You can oh. smoke inside. It's a sewer. God, I feel like you'd make a great Dennis Leary then. <laughs> You mean like 
turn all of fucking uh, Bill Hicks's rants into weird sort of pseudo '80s Republican tirades. Uh, I guess That's Dennis but he Leary could also run the fucking underground sewer system. Oh, I absolutely will. <laughs> Because he had a, yeah, in that movie he had a real good point. He's like, I'm tired of all the rules up there, man. They just let him do like a bit. He's like, I want to rub my naked body in jello, reading Playboy magazine, running down the street. Da 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 da. And it's like, yeah. Because it's just the same thing as it's just like, I want to be a big car flicking butts out the window and eating, you throwing styrofoam things in the fire and uh, <laughs> whatever he's talking about. Oh, yeah, that was from the I'm an asshole. Yeah, asshole song. Yeah. God, it was so good. Well, handicapped people, people make handicapped faces. faces. <laughs> I was going to sing that before you. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Isn't it funny, too, that, like, that was probably more offensive than saying retarded people like that? Because that's, like, a big buzz thing. Well, four years ago. I don't think anyone even cares anymore. But, like, <laughs> like handicapped people make handicapped faces. I think it's because it's mean because you might just have something wrong with your foot. And it's like, oh, you're going to make your dumb handicap face at me there, gimp foot. Like, that's so, like, like they don't even have a mental problem, you know. The family guy addressed that once, too. He's like, Peter, I'm handicapped. about retarded. <laughs> Whatever, Joe. Nobody cares. <laughs> Jesus. If it was on TV, I can repeat it on this podcast no one listens to. It's fine. I don't have the, it's, the it's viewership fine. of uh, Family Guy. Anyways. We're working on that because you know what we've started to do? We've started including the viewer, which is causing some to exist. <laughs> By asking, but actually, what, what really happened is that in the last one, we, uh, we were talking about irrational fears, and one of my irrational fears that I believe you sort of shared at one point, sort of, was aliens. I'll still do. I mean, not really to the same extent, but I definitely don't like seeing what people interpret as aliens because it's just very off-putting and disturbing and upsetting. Yeah, and I think, you know... The, but the idea of aliens in general doesn't frighten me anymore. Um, I don't know. It, it's just the imagined versions of them that people have... Yeah. That's what it is. I knew a, a, a was I had a... a, a young lady friend once who was afraid of I think the the whole concept like I had I had I had I felt bad because I had one of my old bedrooms somewhere I had like lights set up like I always do behind a bunch of my keyboards I'm like oh they look like like alien crafts docking in deep space and she was like I don't like that I'm like but they're co they're like Star Wars shit Amazing. like yeah they look kind of cool <laughs> but like no she was bothered by the whole I was like all right I'm sorry I, I didn't mean to but turn them off <laughs> yeah I was like no they're not there's no aliens in there <laughs> like but because yeah aliens. usually it's just like you see the like the grays and it's like yeah. they're the uncanny valley thing where it's like they look like something from our past or something's very triggering about them uh, like the giant eyes and like the tiny yeah, mouth just the, the, nose the, the just like the disproportions and the I don't know I think it's just like the the long like gangly arms and like yeah like everything about them is bad yeah and when you think about like in medieval times like you're like demons and gargoyles like ooh these are scary and I'm like I well I mean I like what I'm seeing here but no they're not really scary but like the the gray alien archetypal thing is actually like ugh. like I wouldn't have a picture of that up in my house like as much as aliens are like fun yeah. i'd be like i don't really want to like look at that every time i like come around you know to get something out of the refrigerator like that's gonna wig me out a little bit <laughs> that yeah. stated i just used mid journey to auto generate our thumbnail before you got over here because i knew we were going to talk about aliens cool. i was just like uh aliens wearing suits <laughs> playing poker and i was not disappointed by any of them i think i found the one i want to use but cause it looks like dogs playing poker but it's aliens, and there's, like, cards and chips That's flying everywhere for some so reason. cool. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man. No, Mid Journey as a, as a thumbnail generator is so great. Because that's the kind of thing, like, I was never going to pay anyone for that. It was either just going to make some thing in Photoshop like every other dumbass YouTuber does, where it's, like, a kid being, like, doing the Home Alone thing, <laughs> where there's, like, a light bulb and a bunch of emojis being like, it turns out you can't make money from the toilet, what? And it's like, it's, it's like okay, no one got paid for that. But instead, I'm just like, oh, here's... I've used it a couple of times. Like, I made one of a bunch of, like... Like, Hobo was sitting in prison once when I was talking about just, uh, if you don't like the law, just break it, stupid, like, or whatever that episode. That one got a lot of listens on the actual podcast. So there's the there's the YouTube video and then the podcast charts. Charts. Just the thing that tells me who's been listening on all ten of whatever a chart. thing that it's on. Yeah. 
Well, it, do, it doesn't give me like it's standing. It's a graph. I don't yeah, know what it is. Number, number of Googleplex minus three of like a Googleplex <laughs> podcast. I'm like, oop, not at the bottom. Like, <laughs> That's always nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it doesn't even tell me that. I don't even know. But there has to be, look, there's got to be things out here that are about like this, but done like even worse, like insufferably bad. Like I get down on myself occasionally, uh, yeah. but I, I can even I can listen, and I don't even like listening to myself. But I can turn it on in the car, and because I'll forget what I say, and I'll be like, "Ooh, that was funny," like because I have to because then I make little clips of it. Because I don't remember, you know what I mean? Or I'll remember, I'll think I'll remember something, and be like, "Oh, that wasn't funny," or it went on for like nine minutes I'm just too gonna long. Say right now, I literally have already forgotten everything we've talked about so far. So. Yeah. Um, I know we're supposed to be talking about aliens, though, and we're not. We've gone well, on no. to talk about podcast charts, so. No, it's fine. Dude, <laughs> the, the, none of the concepts that I vaguely write down for this could ever kill a whole 60 minutes. Like, the whole point is, is, like, every time that I, I kill five more minutes going way off the rails, and it's funny, like, that's just probably, like, eventually one more person that might actually listen to this instead of being like, oh, no, we really got to get back to talking about a flat tax rate. It's like, okay, like, well, not... Somebody <laughs> might really be like, John, I really want to know about this alien shit. Uh-huh, and you got to listen to the goddamn end before you want to... <laughs> well, you know what? It was happy, though, that uh, Lita, this person that we know from, like, music and stuff, uh, actually did listen to one of the... She was like, I listened on the way down to Kansas City and I didn't realize there was naked pictures of Peter Steele out there, but I looked him up. Ooh. And I was like, did you find him? And then she just put a bunch of eggplant emojis. I'm like, it looks like you did. Um, and that's someone who I didn't really think would say... And that was like towards the end of one of them. And see, <laughs> what that teaches people is that you really can't just go uh, to listen for five minutes and like, for some reason, he just like complained about like hot dogs at baseball games and then he's never even really been to one and then he just yelled about the government for a while and it's like, oh, he finally started talking about, like, I don't know, the new video game that he put in the clickbaity ass title to sucker us into it. But you know what? It's about the journey. And, but yeah, so uh, we got all riled up about aliens and um, I was like, well, yeah, like, I, I, I love all of the old... Old and, and new. Like, there's a lot of new tropes that are, you know, like, like I remember, like, being a rare minority of people. And, I mean, when I was, like, a kid, like, we'd be, like, 11 or 12 talking about UFOs because there was, like, an episode of Unsolved Mysteries and the substitute teacher saw it. And, like, you want to talk about aliens behind my van, kids? Ooh. And we're like, boy, do I. <laughs> That Simpsons where they get they go to the uh, market research thing for itchy and scratchy, but the guy that rounds them up just comes from around the corner and is like, hey kids, would you like to come with me? And they're like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> just with this old yeah. man, like, but um, <laughs> yeah, so we would, you know, whatever, we'd be talking about that, and like, I was always floating the like, what if it's actually time travelers from our future? And now that's such a, th it's such a Rogan thing, he's like, think about yeah. it, man, think about it, man, like, everybody's getting, you know, it's like, people's testosterone's dropping, you know, people like, stay inside, they're gray, they're like, thin, they don't need muscles anymore, they're all genderless, we're going that way, time to talk about that for the 50th time in this episode, blah, 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 blah. but like, he has sort of a point that like, if we super advanced ourselves, we would stop having a need for like, all that, like, we just have big heads and we're interconnected with like psychic well, that technology. Made me think about like the Wally, where I don't know if how we were on camera at that point when we were talking about Wally. I think we like, mentioned the Wally people because we were talking about somebody's how bones. Those bones just don't touch anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they show the x rays of the weird fat chair people. Like, <laughs> like how are we going to walk on Earth and like be on Earth, you know, after oh, now it's like livable again? Well, that was the whole thing in the end of the movie. They were like, I mean, they really glossed over it at the end of Wally. -E. Like, they should have just all been like, and they tried to repopulate Earth, and they're just these slumped over fat corpses with like sea lampreys sucking on them. Like, uh, yeah. They said they just kind of toddled, <laughs> sort of un like a like a baby deer taking its first steps, and then they're fine. Then they're just trotting around, building like teepees and fucking like waterfall like wheels that like give electricity. I'm like, really? You like walked all the way up to where that waterfall was, Tubby? Like you're just living in no gravity, just and eating their lard. Bones. Yeah, their bones touch. didn't touch. They would have just <laughs> died. Like I, I mean, love okay. Wally -E is like my favorite Pixar movie. And I think. Here's my thing though. My fucking bones still touch and i have a fucking hell of a time getting around well maybe that's the problem being laying around for the last two years because of covid and not going anywhere now i'm just like i'm just i fucking can't do it because of COVID. everything <laughs> <laughs> well, I but mean, see that's what your bones that's are touching 
And that, yeah, that's putting a lot of wear on your joints. Maybe if your bones are just floating around in goo, they wouldn't rub together so much and cause you all these problems. Maybe the people from Wally were onto something, could and there was, be, there was you know, be. Pixar's <laughs> not stupid, and they're, you know, they're very, like, thoughtful in the art they create, so they're just like, oh, you laugh, but look at you with your bones touching. They're all rubbing, rubbing together. Your knees are getting all hot. You'll never be a knee or, <coughs> or hip replacement again. Yeah. Like, you could just be a ball of lard. don't have them, because they don't fucking connect. <laughs> yeah, I think that they were showing, like, an evolutionary <laughs> chart thing, you know, where the... Yeah, because wasn't that the joke where, like, the monkey starts standing up, and then it's, like, a guy with a spear, and then it's, like, they kept getting fatter, and their bones went away, and it's, like, they're they're evolving into nature's perfect form, which is a blob. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't hurt a, you know, a blob. You, according to X-Men, you can't, nothing can stop the blob. Uh, you can squeeze through things. Like a cephalopod. <laughs> like, an octopus is basically a blob. I mean, you know, they can yes. get through a thing, like, a giant one can get through a thing, like, this small. Because they don't have bones. Hey, and they're really smart. They can escape. Maybe we're just turning right back there. into our octopus ancestors. An octopus was one of the things yes. that were brought up. They could very well be fucking aliens. I mean, they're very, very I mean, smart. Yeah. Here's the thing. With, like, I want to actually think about what they might... Who said that, too? I tried to, like, write that down. I no, that's the one I didn't write that. down. Oh, shit. Well, it well I'll go like, back and look. Because like, that... That post isn't going away, I or do, it will. I do recall that being on the post, so. Yeah. Well, and, like, somebody pointed out that the only reason that they're not more intelligent, octop octocephalopods, octopi, right. it, uh, is that they can't pass their knowledge on. Like, they're very naturally smart, so if something changed with them, so they evolved to be able to, like, kind of... You know, like primates can, you know, people talk about how like they more recently learned how to use tools and stuff, yeah. and they they kind of like multi generationally will remember like ones in experiments will be like carrying on practices that like they weren't even there for they just learned it from their parents, uh -huh. um, and if octopi could do that, they would be terror they would be like an alien race in the sea, so it's just one thing kneecapping them, but what that. You know, if we're going to get all alieny about it, what that could maybe mean is that they're an offshoot of something that was that, you know, had that piece there. And they were just kind of like a, a leftover side track evolution thing from something that either is still hiding out in the ocean or landed here or whatever. Like, cause I, you know, some some of the evolutionary stuff that we do know about is weirdly indicative of like things coming from space and it's one of those funny things where rather than it's a stretch to try to go oh this is what's happening whatever it's turning into one of those weird things where it's a stretch by more science-minded old school people trying to like do a backflip to explain why this weird shit isn't the case yeah. like well you know it because and you have to watch out for that there's people who wrote um, you know, getting into other wacky things that's sort of related, like Fingerprints of the Gods. You ever heard of Graham Hancock? No. He's a he's an author that was kind of one of the people that put into the mainstream that we're humans have been around longer than we thought. Like he's he was the guy that like put published stuff about Gobekli Tepe before like anybody else did, which is that I don't remember if it's near Turkey or somewhere, but they they found buried like an advanced almost like rome level of architecture and stuff but it's oh. dated to like 12,000 years like thousands of years before ancient egypt okay yeah i have when not heard yeah this before. and and that's the thing there's people look i lately especially but i've always believed this you know it's like the scientists are the good guys in the general scheme of things yes but here's the other problem scientists are people and right. people are the bad guys right. and that's right. 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 that's something you need to always remember and uh systems inefficient systems of people are just what so there you can discover something like uh it looks like we were building like aqueducts when we thought we hadn't figured out agriculture yet so we need to rethink what we're looking at here and then there's like more and more it's not just that one place either they're like They've, they've started to find things that look like drill marks on jewelry that's like 50,000 years, like advanced tools. Not a power drill, probably, but like the kind of thing where they were like, we didn't even know like not to eat our own shit. And then it was like, oh, yeah, we were like drilling holes through like stone 
and doing all this crazy stuff. And we thought Egypt was like this amazing, ancient Egypt was this so crazy this thing. And ancient aliens we're talking about. Well, now. this is just people. <laughs> this isn't really like at this point very woo woo stuff anymore. It's like pretty well no, 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 established. No, no. It's like our. But maybe we're reaching into the ancient aliens. Well, that was the problem because a lot of this stuff got relegated. Like I think he was probably on an episode of that. And it was like The Simpsons where it's like, just ask the scientists, do you, do you think there was even older civilizations than Egypt? He's like, yes. And they were built by aliens. Uh, so they agree that we, <laughs> they just did that thing to him kind of. And, you know, established people in academia and stuff, their, their books they've published, their, you know, whatever, that go like, oh, this is when this started. These are the facts. This is blah, blah, blah. And someone goes like, whoops, we just found out that this isn't true anymore. You know, like people put dinosaur skeletons together wrong and they come back and they're like, not only is this in the wrong order, but these things had feathers. Right. You know, so it's like people will fight and go like, ah, that's kooky, kooky, crazy stuff, even though it's overwhelmingly evidence is piling up. Like, they had feathers. They really, really did. They better have them in that new Jurassic Park or this is, goes from being cutting edge to just stupid now. Did that already come out? There were, I don't know, there's been a few. I mean, they knew they had feathers before the Chris Pratt one. And they didn't have feathers in that. And they were like, it's like, the thing about Jurassic Park is it's really accurate. It's like, we discovered something that would make it lame. Well, in 93, that first one was like, they showed dinosaurs in a light that was like a lot different than what people kind of thought. It was very cutting edge. Not different than what like scientists knew, but your average person like, oh, they're just big lumbering doofuses and like whatever. And they're like, no, these ones are like really fast and they hunt in packs and all this stuff that they were like, was like brand new scientific They're knowledge. more like birds. I remember learning that in Jurassic Park. They're yeah, like, and then they were like, we found out that- like land birds. <laughs> in fact, they, they weren't like scaly lizard things, but then they just left it that way in the newer movies. They're like, yeah, but come on, kids like it's the cool scarier. dinosaurs. It's I don't know. I mean, have you ever had like a rooster get mad at you? Like, I feel like that'd be a pretty scary <laughs> Jurassic Park. Just giant, giant uh, chickens. Like, that's why they were so afraid of them in Return to Oz. That was know, like a like, separate like universe or whatever. And the Wheeler guys were like, is that a chicken in there with you? Because they remembered the real dinosaurs in the merry old land of Oz. <laughs> oh, God, that movie's so fun. Beware. The, I still want to print, like, get a, get a print made of the Beware the Wheeler sign and hang yes. it on the house. Because, like, that. my parents wouldn't let me, but aha, now I have another wheeler around, and we can say, beware <laughs> the wheelers. And I also have one that would just agree to that. So Absolutely. that's good. Yeah, that you know what? Everything's really worked out for me. Um, so let's just go down the list a little bit. Because I want to name names so I can trick people into listening. Um, and we are getting close to that famous half hour mark where I finally kind of start getting it together. Getting and then when we just, when we start having fun, it's time to go, kids. I should redo the, I like the outro, but I feel like that should almost be the intro, you know, the disclaimer. And then at the end should be like a reddit stippy, like, yeah, we good, we killed some time, we had some laughs. Yeah. Yeah, like this, end what of Saturday Night Live. Or no, that was crusty. Red and Stimpy had like a different one. Yeah, crusty was yeah. like, we had some laughs, we killed some time. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone just all the wacky characters which we probably should invent but um, a fellow by the name of Stephen Dunbar he asserts that they were classified army tech and then there was like multiple paragraphs of stuff I just kind of skimmed I, but I he's, he's <laughs> Buddy, but I like, uh, no, but well, it's mostly got, like, first through the first paragraph. I was like, mm -hmm, mark. yeah, well, I'm not here to <laughs> no take offense. a, I'm not, I never said I was here to take a reading test, and also, <laughs> um, like, I, I kind of saw where you're coming from, so I'm like, okay, I, yeah, I know this, I know this thought, you know, I'm familiar with it. Um, the thing that bugs me about that though is it, being the only answer, right? Like, if it's classified military tech, but then that we got from, like, Bob Lazar's story being accurate. By the way, have I gone off about Bob Lazar to you? Bob Lazar. Yeah, like, how bizarre. Bob Lazar. But, um, yeah, like, if that was the case, and then now we're seeing the fruits of that labor. Yeah, I believe we made a fucking video about it. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I forgot about those. Anyway, Jeez. like, um, those were a while ago. Yeah. Not and they got upwards of a couple hundred views um, for all the fucking effort that went into them. But, no, so, right, yeah, totally. We, we're all up, all over that. But anyhow, like, going their classified tech without that part of it, I'm, and I'm talking about, you know, the modern UAP, UFO, where they're kind of starting to go, hey, we know about this because they kind of don't have a choice. That, what, the, what they have there 
being stuff that we just kind of invented would change things to the point where, I mean, maybe we're just sitting on it. Like, I just want a devil's advocate. Like, we or some other country invented it. And by the way, I mean, pretty scary if America invented it. But for us as Americans, it'd be awfully scary if someone else did first. But, and to wit, everything, I mean, if you had things that could, like, just, you know, from a dead stop go, like, flying over, you know, like, at unbelievable speeds and then dead stop and then go through water and back up out of water and, like, appear and disappear. And it's like, if we had that... Even if there was, even if Bob Lazar was just making all that shit up, which I personally, I'm like, I kind of have a hard time not believing him, and I really want to be skeptical about things. But man, I, I it's really tough like when Bob you listen Lazar to him. Too. It's like, tough when I, you listen to him. <laughs> but if we actually just already had that working and completely could just build as many of those as we wanted, like we know, everything would be so fucked up because you know, a keeping a secret like that. You know, that we're actually just using. It's like, you know, stealth bomber stuff was, like, leaking out. But also, it's so far beyond, like, a stealth bomber. It's like, we could just fly to Alpha Centauri in, like, four seconds because the only way those could possibly work is if they were in, like, a gravity bubble that's, like, outside of time and the constraints of light speed and whatever. Like, if you can manipulate gravity, you can mess with, yeah, time. Space no longer is a concern. Like, you could just be like, yeah, we just went over there and, like, in no time like it just didn't matter and as a matter of fact we like went back in time a little so we showed up before we left so it was even faster and it's like and by the way maybe that's how faster than there's so many ways to circumvent the speed of light you cannot break it in a traditional sense no but i always hated that argument where people are like so therefore aliens couldn't have like you're thinking like yeah. a like an ape that's had steam engines for about a hundred years. Like that's that's ape thinking. It's like yeah, we know that that's probably true that you can't get an object to whiz through space faster than the speed of light without an infinite amount of energy or something like that. Whatever it is. Uh, but what if you can go from one point to another point without actually having to go in between? Well, you went there faster than light, but you didn't actually travel faster than light. And since time and gravity and everything, and we do know that those are completely connected, we do know like. Modern, like, uh, Takato, was it the, 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 the pop scientist that's kind of in the realm of a modern, uh, uh, Carl Sagan and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson or whatever, but he's an old Asian dude oh, with like, this, Asian like this beautiful long you. silver mane of hair and yes, 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 him yes. and a few other people who are, awesome. who are very awesome have gone from time travel is 100% not a thing anyone could ever do to like, Oh, you fully could, but we just, you know, I, it's, it's really hard. Like we don't know how we would quite get it to work, but here's basically what would happen. And that's the thing. As soon as you can, like, move a little bit backwards in time, well, now it doesn't matter. Like, you could travel at sub-light speed, but just go back in time the whole way until you end up leaving or showing up when you left. Did you go faster than the speed of light? Not really, but it didn't matter. You just ended up somewhere as if you had done that, but did. There's so, and they're like, uh, yeah, that's completely possible. Just we don't know how to do it yet. Well, a civilization that invented a steam engine, like, a hundred thousand years ago might have figured it out, you think? Like, if they didn't blow themselves up first or whatever? <laughs> like, so yeah, when people are like, oh, aliens are impossible, or the people who are even like, well, they're probably out there, but there's no way they could get here. I'm like, they absolutely could get here. Like, if we're already kissing the tip of time travel, or at the very least understanding how it's theoretically possible, dump, what? Dump 500 years on that. Not even 10,000. See where we're at. Probably pretty crazy far. And I mean, like with the CRISPR genetic engineering stuff and all this other shit where immortality is not too far out of the realm of doability and all this other stuff. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the thing with the, did you see the thing with the like reanimated cells? Oh, yeah. We're getting, we're already fucking, we're 10 to 20 years away from something real wild with that. Yeah. The cure for death is going to be an interesting little, uh, story in our thing. But it's also like if we're going to become interstellar travelers, it's like, yeah, we just, we don't die. And we can, like, you know, alter time. So it's like, yeah, we had to sit on... The people at home, you know, experience us just basically instantaneously going from here to there. But you had to sit through the ride. But if your cells don't break down or can be rebuilt indefinitely or whatever, and you just go into sort of a coma stasis, it ends up not mattering. So it's like, you can do all of this shit with things that we almost all... Like, we're, like, less than 100 years from figuring out. So again, if they're a 1,000 years ahead of us, which could fucking very easily be true... Uh, yeah, it doesn't even become that hard anymore. That's pretty fucking cool. I never sat and, like, You never thought about it like that? Yeah, hey. Do, do, do. <laughs> I 
do 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 Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. But there's a lot of ways to skin an intergalactic cat. I mean, that's just, you know, if it's... It, 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 maybe even everything I'm saying is insane and it doesn't matter because I'm not a super advanced alien and they figured out what I didn't think of while I was drunk. Who could imagine? <laughs> they might have pieced it together a little bit better than someone with no scientific background who's drinking gin. Like, yeah, aliens far more advanced than us may figure out a way to kind of travel huge distances without breaking the speed of light laws. Or it's just us time traveling and da 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 And yeah, and again, if we figure out time travel at some point, like, then that being... And, and who... Somebody said that. Derek Smith mentioned the us from the future. And Travis Schreechout also mentioned that. Um, let me pull a little check mark there. <laughs> so I don't start repeating myself. Um, but yeah... And I've, I've all again, even when I was a, like a little kid, I was like, "What if it's just us from the future?" And they're like, "What?" Yeah, so like, yeah. Fuck, I remember having these conversations with you because we were afraid of aliens, so we would talk about stuff. Yeah, so we had to and know. So to like rationalize our fears and make us like not so afraid, like you and I, as like me being like nineteen or eighteen, and you being like you know twenty, twenty one, <coughs> whatever. You just like you would calm me down or like chill out and probably chill yourself out. We'd be like, "What if it's just us?" And for some reason, that actually, like, calmed me down. Because I'm like, at least it's not the Greys, man. At least it's not the Greys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the Greys, but it's just us horribly evolved. In yeah, the we also talked about There's that. There's nothing like, good about that. It's just us, man. It's just us. <laughs> it's weird that that's comforting. Like, how, how strangely how like, dopey comforting? we were back then. Like, because, like... It, like, the idea that someone's actually here from another planet, like, looking at us, it's like... It's not that scary. And by the way, in, in in everything and in this, and I didn't write whoever said that down or that where it's like um, someone had pointed out that it's, you know, marauders or something like they're coming to like take stuff from us or enslave us. And it's like, I don't think that, you know, the people that figured out what I just, you know, postulated, like how to like circumvent time and space and. I don't think they need, like, human slaves or even... Minor minerals, that's what it was. Yeah, it could be that. And here's... <laughs> okay, so I will point out that Ryan Nelson, I think, was kind of joking a little bit, but they uh, he brought up a thing that I have also heard about before, where there's... And it's actually kind of fun. Somebody uh, postulated that we were visited, like, have been being visited for a long time because there's these Sumerian um, pictures and texts and things like that that have, I mean, wild stuff in them. Like, and they're from, like, 6,000 years ago, and they have accurate, like, not 100% accurate, but, like, maps of the solar system. I mean, out to, like, Pluto in the in the Kuiper belt and stuff. And it's, yeah, it's like if the sun was to scale, it would be so big that the drawing wouldn't work. But they'd be like, you know, the sun's the biggest and it's in the middle and then there's two other things and then Earth and then another thing and then a couple of really big things. And in, like, the right order, you know, like, they, they had that and people were like, there's nothing else this can possibly be. And how the fuck could they have... Like, we barely saw that, you know, 50 years after the Industrial Revolution did Clyde W. Tombaugh find Pluto using, like, a weird kind of photography that showed movement. You know, it's like, oh, that object has to be a little closer than the background stars or whatever. And, um, yeah, like, so that's, like, fucking insane. And there's, like, DNA double helixes. And people are like, that's just decorational. I'm like, uh, it looks a lot like... I don't know. What? That's, like, really... It's awfully close. <laughs> Yeah. What am I? What movie am I thinking of? Where someone's just kind of like, maybe it's, oh, it's like it look, uh, it looks a lot like they're pretty close. Like, ah, fucking, it's something that both of us would have seen. I know, I know. I keep defaulting to the Simpsons that uh, Dave and I always quote when we we're trying to park the, you know, the tour van somewhere or whatever. Like, how am I doing on that side? It's like, getting a lot of sparks on this side, Dad. It's just, <laughs> just like, all right, now everybody out the windows. Because we'd always have to park at some awful place. To, yeah. I remember um, that thing. Yeah, so, but uh, anyway, so they were, yeah, they were like, oh, I know, it's an Archer reference. They really look a lot the same, right? Yeah, I barely would have seen that one. But it doesn't matter. The... The thing about the Sumerian stuff, but the, but the problem with the, all the Sumerian stuff is that it in itself is beautiful. It's interesting and wonderful. They're, they have not only the DNA double helixes and solar systems, but they have things of like these huge 
like bald people like holding these like ape like somewhere between apes and human looking things just like mm -hmm. in its lap like teaching them and stuff. I'm like that looks like something yeah someone who <laughs> listens to too much Rogan would get as a tattoo but it's like a real <laughs> yeah like drawing that is from back then and like a stone freeze or something like that and so like but but the guy that wrote the book about it, and this is what Ryan was talking about, was talk, like, as soon as you start giving these things, like, names, everyone stops believing you. Like, if when I go, <laughs> when I talk about, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, in a, in a way, because we don't know how consciousness works, and you, you learn this in the old K-hole a bit, like, reincarnation could be a very real thing that abides by our laws of physics. We just don't 100% understand how sentience works, yeah. time, what makes us, what we are even really. It's, a, it's totally a thing. And someone goes like, yeah, because see, what happens is the energy people, they're called the Twilas, and they come and they're like, okay, see, though, yeah, I know we're describing the same thing, but you're a crazy person. These things don't have names yeah, that you know. the second like, you, you give it names as Ben, it just sounds really like it. bullshit, and it just, it really just makes it sound cheesy. You like, know? Those like, are the, those are the Corinian people, and they're my favorite. <laughs> yeah. You just, now you just have your Salome. own puppet show. Salome. <laughs> yep, now you're just singing about aliens with puppets. <laughs> But, yeah, but he said that they were here to mine our gold or something, and I'm like, they're not... Anything that can do that could synthesize gold. I mean, right? And then also, again, going back to Bob Lazar, if element and element 115 is a thing, it's just that it, you know we can make, like, a few molecules of it or whatever at a time with a, a hadron collider, but, um, you know, and he was like, they had huge bricks of it and stuff. But it's like, if... You know that if that's what is is required to make that sort of travel possible, and that was his claim, is that that element is what made that work. That would be worth a lot more than shiny rocks. But the person writing it back then was like, "Gold, gold's important because it's important to us because we're stupid." Like, and he's like, "Well, obviously the aliens are real smart, so they want our gold." Like the head alien is just gold member. It's like, hello, can I paint as you who gold? Oh, and they're like, will you teach us about space? Like, yes, but first to gold. Like that's <laughs> that's so stupid. I hate people's obsession with gold too. Where like, actually, someone was on. I was watching. I don't remember. Someone was being interviewed, and they were talking about how like you need to collect gold because money won't be worth anything if the the grid falls down or whatever. And they're like, well, what will gold be worth? It's like, well. You can use it for things like building circuit boards. Like, in the apocalypse? You're making a satellite? Like, what are you talking about? We're going to be trading, like, human slaves and bullets. I mean, have you not seen Mad Max? Oh, my like, God. Like, water, gasoline, bullet farm, and the women. That's going to be it. And they trade those. And then you die. Oh. A glorious death on the Fury Road. <laughs> Yeah, so that was stupid. And then, so therefore, also, aliens really, yeah, they're like, ooh, shiny. Not like, no. If anything, they're just keeping an eye on us. And again, um, it could be because they put us here. I need to check these off because I'm starting to, like, lose track of what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, before I get too much further, though, I should really, both uh, Brad Birch and Ryan Taylor suggested that it's Bigfoot. Ooh, I saw that. And I like that idea. Hey, also, a video about Bigfoot. Brad Birch is Bigfoot, <laughs> and when he was like, I don't think it is Bigfoot, that is when I got real suspicious that it was Bigfoot. Because that's exactly <laughs> what Bigfoot would say. Like, oh, I'm not an alien. I'm like, sure you're not Bigfoot. Can we have him on the next video we make about Bigfoot? If we'd have him. <laughs> He would be very excited to be Bigfoot in a video we make about Bigfoot, even though I think we've fucking absolutely covered every part of that that's not stupid that we possibly could. Oh, wait, though. We didn't cover much of the stupid parts. That could be the sequel. Because uh, I don't yeah. care anymore if anyone learns or if I help. <laughs> like, I, I, I was altruistic for about five minutes there before the pandemic hit. That was during. Or wait, no. Uh, weren't we getting? planning it before? I don't know. Nah, because I was doing I was doing some video stuff with Ben before it hit, and I think we were talking about trying to do it better. But then it hit, and then that was a good excuse to... Yeah, because we made it all here, and, and I moved did it here. better. Oh, yeah. And then it was like, but why are we doing this? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically, it was probably Bigfoot. I just wanted to check that off. Um, let's see. Buh, 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 buh. I really like the, uh, the Prometheus thing where, and which is, you know, other people have theorized this, where we are... 
And someone did mention that too, I think. And I got, yeah, I was making all these sloppy notes. I don't know if I saw that one. Well, someone mentioned that our DNA, actually it might've been Stephen Dunbar later down in his, or no, that wasn't, that was about government stuff. Someone else said something about DNA. I don't know, but I, the, the fact of the matter is that during the evolution of human beings, there was a period where our brains doubled in size in a amount of time that was so insanely short that it was just, it's not even possible. Hmm. There's something like, because evolutionary time is like hundreds of millions of years. Right. And in the course yeah. of like, I don't remember, it was something like a half a million years or something like that. It was like 500,000 years. Our brains doubled in size. Hmm. And that's insanity. Some people think, because there's a, there's a lot of things this could be. And this was like 2 million years ago or something. And uh, so it was like right when we were first becoming people. Some people do think that that might have something to do with, like, the, um, just the fact that we kind of invented fire and then started cooking food because your brain is a computationally expensive organ, right? Like, it uses a lot of, like, if you really, people are like, how come I'm fat? I think all the time. It's like, well, you're not thinking as hard as you think you are, fatty. Because, honestly, like, people do lose weight from just overclocking their brain. Like, but, I mean, we're talking about people who are thinking harder than we think. And, I mean, you know, but it does take a lot. It takes absolutely a lot to run, you know, you're like problem solving in the jungle and stuff. It's like that, that is costing yeah, you I calories. Yeah, I guess that's different than the dream world that I live in because I think the dream world makes you fat. <laughs> I think, well, I think you have to move around in real life too, but it's just like your brain, you got to remember what things used to be like in the monkey days where, right, you know, just... you're also running through the woods, climbing up shit throwing rocks at stuff that's trying to kill you and then but then you're like learning how to verbally communicate with other monkeys and make plans with them and stuff while you're doing that so i think a thinking person that goes to the gym might be in better shape than some you know dummy or but still will be in better shape than a thinking person that doesn't go to the gym like it, it's just another facet that you know all that problem solving does eat up calories but you're also you know running away from tigers and stuff so i mean it is a, it is a thing and food is harder to come by and cooking food makes it a lot more, um, you get a lot more energy out of it that way. And so it could be that people that, like, because we're so violent and horrible too, that that could have happened because we started cooking food. Some people did, right? And we figured it out and we, we shared that only within our tribes. And then that made us a lot more effective at everything. And you know what we like to do? Kill other tribes or fuck them. And either way... <laughs> It ended no, up being that the people no. that weren't, that didn't figure out to cook food just got eradicated. And so it's like you can't, you know, evolution doesn't usually go that fast unless, you know, you, you, you go in and start fooling around with it a little bit. And a, a sort of weird organic genocide of the lesser apes by us and leaving only people that ever figured out how to do that. You could maybe explain away. Like only half a million years and everyone's brain kind of got way bigger because just because we got smart enough to be better at being murderers. That makes sense. And that could make sense. It, it does. Or the, the stoned ape hypothesis, which is that we started eating mushrooms and that gave us all these crazy... I think those two things could actually be completely connected, though. It's like maybe we figured out fire because mushrooms helped us start thinking outside of the box a little bit. But... And then we killed everybody. Aliens, though. <laughs> but probably... <laughs> We were just a regular, just a, yet another species of ape. And aliens came down and tinkered, it hybridized with us and tinkered around with ah, our Oh, yeah, no, John. the Prometheus thing. John like, Kyle. John so Kyle. We are genetic Prometheus hybrids. Come in? Because that guy, the, one of the bald guys. Yeah, shouts out to oh, John I know, Kyle. I know about it now. He but comes. I get what we are. I'm like, oh. And he That's drops point, DNA man. on Earth, but no, I, yeah, <laughs> not getting to any point. Yeah, you've seen this. I know. Okay. But. Yeah, the, the idea that we were sort of interfered with. The only reason that I don't love that theory, though, is that, and it, I mean, it would answer like, oh, they come back and check on us because they made us. They're like, all right, what are you doing? Uh, it adds the religious element to it. It adds the God. God and we, we are weirdly to wired to, to hold things up as God, so that might be a deep part of our origin past, but it was like aliens, you know, I don't know. But it's an interesting thing to think about. But the thing that that's sort of... Um, sort of rules out or maybe 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 it could square with this uh is a, another thing that i really love and it's that there were other almost humans like more than just neanderthals there was like us 
Neanderthals, these guys, that guys, those guys. We talked about that in the Bigfoot video, actually. Yes. But, yeah, there's, like, the little short guys. And, like, they kind of died off. But they also got smart enough to use weapons and things. And they were kind of at odds with us. But, so it's like... But I guess the aliens could have come down, tinkered with us a bit, and it created a bunch of weird offshoots. And whatever we stemmed from just ended up being the thing that murdered and bred our way into being, like, you know, the only thing like that. Because people have ne Neanderthal DNA in them, like, 100%. Yeah, like, they, they yeah. Have, some have more than others. Um, and Neanderthals were kind of like Betamax, where they actually were better at certain things. And, like, but just it didn't work out, you know? <laughs> and <we're> like, <laughs> oh, no, Beta. But... Yeah, you know what? That never mind. I'm gonna change my tune. That the alien DNA tinkering, I, it could have been squared with multiple sort of like, eh, these were almost humans. These were almost humans, and then, then. But if they tinkered and then left, then it would just work itself out. We're like, oh yeah, we ate all the other ones. It's just us now. Like, okay, fine. Well, you you were the smartest and most violent, so hopefully you don't invent nuclear weapons too soon. If you do, though, I'll have to come back and check on you. And that, you know, <laughs> yeah, then I get it or whatever. So I like that one. Let's see, they're after a gold. Uh, oh, I wanted to add something to the Stephen Dunbar one, though, because I made this comment. I heard a story once that the Roswell, Roswell thing was, like, someone has this theory that it was the, the Russians did that as an intentional way to, like, fuck with us. Mm. Like, during a time, because it was, like, right after we dropped a nuclear bomb and right after all this other stuff. And uh, it was... It wasn't a weather balloon, but, you know, it was, like, a hokey flying contraption made to look weird on purpose. That was, like, a, a UFO. But part of the story was that they put, they found uh, kids with Down syndrome and then surgically altered them to look even, like, weirder and more fucked up and just put them in the craft. Whoa. And they were alive in there, like, until they crashed so that they found these half-alive, weird, small scary-looking fucked-up things, like, in the wreckage that they Jesus. thought were aliens and stuff. And that's where some of those, like, People, some of the people who think some of those photos are actually real, and ah, who knows? God, but they're like, think some wild shit. But but they they were real, but they were just of that. They weren't of real aliens. They were of what we thought were for a second. And my favorite thing is my uh, you know great grandpa lived near there when that happened, huh. and um, had mentioned or kept. It's not in the family anymore, but was, there was somebody that said something about the wild thing was not the thing that said we found aliens it was the panicked retraction the next day uh, it was like the sloppiest fucking writing it was just like yeah that was uh that, that, nope nope not it. Uh, like it was like that is almost more damning than the first one. Oh yeah like because that is what makes the first one seem scarier because it was so cavalier it's like oh ufo crashed look at that and they're like never mind it's all spelled wrong and shit it's like okay <laughs> Somebody was just typing with a gun to their head there. Like, yeah, that's fun to think about. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to add that in there. Um, boy, I don't know how to spell this name. Aaron, L-I-I-M-A-T-A-I-N-E. Well, obviously he's an alien. Um, Aaron Leimachchen, or he's the roadie for Rammstein. But he said in, they're insectoids that rule the moon. And I think that's what that's I'm going to go with. Yeah. Because what did I say I like in my that. post, everyone? I said I wanted to hear your garbage ass theories about aliens. And if, if yeah, if, if insect, insectoid clothes of Hitler that rule the moon. <laughs> that's the right answer. Like, I don't want any reasonable shit about, you know, time travel to circumvent light speed or us from the future. Or like, um, let's see, Peter, Peter Pepper, and Jimmy Don, and Clint Lasher, Lash Lasher. I can't ever get your name right. I'm sorry, man. You and your son. Um, we all know Peter Pepper. Jimmy Don is a is a local rap mogul that put Black Moon Rising up on his YouTube page to go watch. And Clint Lasher um, gave me the one leg tattoo I have for free before one of the last SMB shows ever up in Brainerd. Uh, that's where I learned don't get a tattoo and then even a small one and then play a rock concert because I was full of beans for like a second but by the third song and I was like holy <laughs> Moses I was like fuck I was just a wreck good thing no one was there and that's part of why we decided to quit but yeah um, <laughs> they all went for the interdimensional overlap thing although with slightly different angles like 
I think Peter was saying that it could even be like, like no one's intentionally doing anything. We're just seeing things because our instruments on everything has gotten better that we wouldn't normally catch. Where it's like, yeah, there, there, there might be yeah, much more advanced. Yeah, the new fucking telescope, the James Webb, whatever. Yeah, well, I'm waiting to see what happens with that. Apparently, there's already a kerfuffle, though, about there's certain things they're blacking out, and it's like the patterns of which are very suspicious. Oh, like, of why are we not? Sure, sure. Why can't we look at that sun sized planet, or, yeah, with like a whatever, that similar solar system to ours right over there where we thought there was water, and now we can't look at it? <sighs> yeah, that's interesting. Oh, well. Or that thing where we're like, that might be a Dyson sphere. This new telescope should be able to actually see that better. By the way, that's one of the things that's blocked out for no reason. That's weird. Anyway, oh, yeah. like, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting thing that I like. Um, the yeah, interdimensional shit's fun, because, uh... Well, it's also pretty likely due to the way that we think time and stuff works, yeah, that there well, has and, to be offshoots. And, oh, man, when we get to talking about ketamine, I'll talk about time, because you experience time so differently, and yeah, it really... Wow. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll set up the next one. I'll pull I'll pull the crowd and be like, has anyone done medicinal ketamine and has anyone done ketamine to just horse around like just Jake and ketamine I and, and perception of time and Well I wanna hear yeah, I just like bring me your story. Actually, you know what? I'll get on board a little bit too. Since some people actually listen to this, if you know anybody or you have done ketamine, uh yeah, like I don't know, send me a message or put it in the comments or do something. Whatever you fucking do on YouTube, I don't care. But, yeah, I want to hear about that. But I'll put it on my Facebook, too, because I actually have people that pay attention to me there, unlike everywhere else. You know, the one place where you can't make money. Um, let's see, the Russian flyover. We're almost done. Oh, but right, uh, Jimmy's thing was a little bit more, like, intentional interdimensional cross riffs. Like the, um... The Tunguska Blast of 1909. Or I was trying to fucking race stance. I couldn't do it. Um, or just a simple interdimensional cross riff. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, it could be we're seeing stuff we don't normally see, or it is a concerted effort because, you know, people, variations of the human race that have advanced differently in parallel dimensions could eventually figure out how to circumvent and travel between those parallel dimensions. That one feels... And then right we sometimes we see them. I like the insect one, like I just because I like it. Yeah, that, ins- this one, it, it's just because of my ex- my experiences. Feels. Unless, oh, yeah, I think I didn't mention Chris Bricker. Uh, was that the the grays are machines that drones that are just sent, and that, that's another one where I'm like, if if they're if like let's say we can't circumvent light speed all that well, then you know you could just send robots out into space forever and they just reactivate when they happen to happen upon something send them out in every different direction like the fucking borg that's not even that crazy of an idea because we're getting real close to having some artificial intelligence stuff that's Uh, gone a little further than it should have and like we're also getting better at making batteries and all these other kinds of crazy things and it's like i i once had a theory i think derek and i were talking about where like that will be like, we'll just start making more and more advanced AI and machines until we replace ourselves with them. And then we'll just start being like, well, there's nothing left to do on Earth. So we just go into, like, standby mode and just shoot them in every direction. And, like, someday Earth will be known as that goddamn planet all the robots keep coming from. Like, that could be. Like, that could, but, but someone that else could have beat us to like it. the plot of a Ridley Scott TV show or movie. <laughs> well, yeah, it is a little bit like <laughs> Aliens the mo- and Borg kind no, of mixed together. Uh, his newest uh, Raised by Wolves is a, a show Scott. on HBO. Um, it, I I liked the first season, but kind of home went boob to, office went to crap in the second season, in my opinion. But a lot of shows do. Writers leave; they run out of money, or they only got good ideas for one uh, season. I don't know. It, it's worth a watch, but I just. Yeah, it, Meh. Well, I'll check it out. But our, our final thought here, because we only have a few minutes left, comes from Patrick Ray. And he says it's the Small Mammal Alliance. And, uh, oh, I like that one too. Yeah, it's a theory that the squirrels are they're playing dumb. They're secretly a lot smarter than we think they are. They live underground. They, you know, they come up to the surface to forage for nuts, but then they're down there like, you know, it's like the Pentagon. Like, but you know, like, but full of squirrels, <laughs> and little spacesuits doing things oh, like that. The and they're squirrel Pentagon. I can't imagine what that looks like. It's a, probably adorable for one thing, but it, <laughs> oh. what a, <laughs> 
What an adorable secret technocratic uh, installation under the earth. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know what? And I really, I really like that one. And I think just to circle back for a second before I leave, I, uh, yeah, I do want to say my opinion on aliens. I don't, you know, a there is almost by definition of the size of the universe, other things alive out there. B the universe has been around for a long time. C, there's no, so if there's other things, there's no way that we're like the first thing. And D, like if anything is sufficiently advanced beyond us, it would have no problem getting here. Um, I would say though that the thing where people are like, yeah, but would you go, would a, you know, would you stop on the freeway to go talk to an anthill? Um, no, probably not. Although people do study ants. That's the thing that everyone leaves out of that. It's like, have you ever you seen go. like Earth? You know, the documentary, and it's, it's like there's ants all over that thing, like ants mm -hmm. on a log. It's like we sat, there was like a giant hit show of just sitting there watching, Ooh, what are the ants doing? So it's like, okay. So but you're dung saying. beetles, I mean. Yeah. Dung. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you don't, you, you're like, oh, did you stop and talk to the ants? Like, no, but you just watched an hour long TV show about them. Like, are you sure we're not going to pay attention to that kind of thing? And then aliens wouldn't be like, yeah, maybe it's just the occasional film crew showing up. I don't know. It's not like it's all of them. It's not like it's like oh yeah there is an alien superhighway that we noticed them building it's like they never stop like yeah i know why would they do that sure but occasionally like someone with a camera who's just kind of like my mom and dad said i couldn't make money as a documentary film alien and i'm gonna prove them wrong i'm gonna make this thing about these little earth ants that's us and i'm gonna put it on our giant 3d hollow tvs and it's gonna go on <laughs> netflix their version of that or whatever and then everyone's gonna watch it everyone's gonna think i'm a big man and then we oh, all yay. just <laughs> wonder you know why why all the anal probings just to make a documentary i feel like that was unnecessary but i think it's important to remember that a lot of directors and filmmakers kind of have that harvey weinstein bent to them <laughs> and there's not a lot of oversight in the intergalactic community the Reverend John Wheeler podcast takes zero responsibility for the words, actions, or ideas of its host, guests, or listeners. Though the people on the screen may at times be speaking directly to you and may occasionally give you direct calls to action, neither Reverend John nor the Alchemical Cocktail Lounge are under any moral or legal obligation to answer for the potentially disastrous repercussions that may arise if you are stupid enough to actually follow the orders of a raving lunatic. Think for yourself and do whatever you want, because you're on your own. If anyone ever tries to sue this podcast, black SUVs will converge on your location in the darkness of night and you will never be seen again. Remember to like and subscribe.